Hey everyone, in this video I want to introduce you to something called a cost function. The cost function, as its name implies, is a function. It takes in our farmer's data and predictions our neural network has made on that data, and it spits out a single number. Now we interpret this number as how bad our computer is doing. It's how far our predictions are from what they should be from the data. So what we want to do is minimize this number and when we minimize this number, that's telling us we're getting our predictions closer to what they should be from the data. Now to change the output of a function, we have to change one of its inputs. We can't change the data because the data are just measurements we collected from the real world, but we can change the predictions. The predictions depend not only on the data, but also on the parameters or weights of our neural network, which we're able to change. Now let's see how we define the cost function. So we'll start with our neural network. We'll take in some data. and we'll start with this first flower here. Take in its two measurements, input them into the neural network and get a prediction. And for every prediction, there's a true value that we want it to be. So we want to bring this point to closer to one. These measurements were from a red flower. We use one to symbolize red. And so we want to make this number as close to one as possible. So we'll bring the true value over here next to our prediction and we're going to put our cost function right here. Now the cost function is going to take the prediction and the true target value and output a number. Now let's define the cost function. It's going to involve the prediction and the target value. We're going to take the difference of the two and then we're going to square the difference and if you evaluate this, you'll get minus 0.8 squared, which is equal to 0.64. But instead of using the values here, let's use what they actually represent. So this 0.2 actually represents the prediction of the neural network, and the 1 is the target value. We want it to be close to 1, so it's the target value, and we square the difference. This cost function has a name. It is the error or difference of what our prediction is from what we want it to be, and then we square that difference. And so the name of the cost function, can you guess it? It's the squared error cost function. Now to minimize the error, we can't change the target value, that's from the data. We can't change the two inputs, that's from the data. So the only thing we can change is the prediction. And the only way we can change the prediction is by changing the weights and bias of our neural network. Now let's look at a really simple neural network and visualize the cost function and see how it can inform us how to change these parameters. Okay, so we'll start off with our squared error cost function again. Now we're going to have a really simple neural network. It has no inputs and one parameter b. So the prediction of this neural network is always going to be whatever value b is currently equal to. So the prediction in our cost function is just going to be now we'll pick a random target value that we want, let's say 4, and this is the cost function that we're going to be working with. We're going to try to minimize this by changing the value of b. Now I know you're saying, well, we could just make b equal to 4, and we'd get 4 minus 4, 0 squared is 0, but we're going to minimize this using information provided by the cost function instead because for more complicated examples, it won't be so obvious what to set b to be equal to. So let's get some idea of what the cost looks like as we change b. So on the horizontal axis, we'll vary b. On the vertical axis, we'll graph the cost. And let's take a look. Okay, so it's a parabola. And if you notice, it's centered right on b is equal to 4. So the cost is equal to 0 when b is equal to our target value. The cost is a positive number anytime b is not equal to our target value. And as b gets further and further away from our target, the cost goes up and up and up. Now what property of the cost function can we use to tell us how to change b? Should we increase it or decrease it? You want to take a guess? You can use the slope of the cost function. So right now you're seeing something called a tangent line. When we're above our target value, 
this line is sloping upwards. You see how it's going up? And when we're below our target value, this line is sloping downwards. So when we need to increase B, we have a negative slope. And when we want to decrease B, we have a positive slope. So what update should we do to B to get us right down here into the target value? Well, we can subtract the slope of the cost function at B. So if B starts over here less than our target and we subtract a negative number, we're going to move it closer to the target. We keep subtracting a negative number, we're pushing it to the right. Subtracting a negative number is like adding a number to B. So we're going to push, 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 push. And if we're using the slope, you can see the slope is slowly approaching zero. So we're going to add less and less and less and less to B. And boom. Whoops, went too far. Boom. We're at the target. Now, if B started higher than the target, we're going to subtract a positive number. And subtracting a positive number is going to push B to the left. It's going to decrease. You know, we're above our target value. We're going to decrease B, decrease, 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 and ultimately, boom, we're at the target. And you can also see that the slope of the cost function is zero when we're right at the target value. And so if we subtract a zero value, we're just going to leave B as it is. So we're going to sit right at the target. Now we have to use a fraction of the slope or else we can overshoot and bounce out of this parabola like crazy. Um, and if we use too small of a fraction, we may never ultimately reach the target because we'll just go slower and slower and slower as the slope approaches zero. So we'll learn more about that later. It's called a learning rate. But right now the takeaway is to update B, you just use a negative fraction of the slope and that will push you right to the target. So how do we get a function that gives us the slope of the cost function at a specific value of b? Well, we're going to have to use some calculus, and in particular it's called the derivative. So we're going to take the derivative of the cost function with respect to b. All that means is we're going to get a function of the slope of the cost function at specific values of b. So we're going to actually derive this in the next video algebraically. And then in videos after that, I'll show you simple rules from calculus you can use to apply to find this derivative much faster. And then in videos after that, I'll show you how libraries like TensorFlow or Theano automatically differentiate your cost function with respect to your model's parameters. So you don't even have to worry about all this math. But I think it's pretty cool to see for yourself and understand how these machine learning libraries are able to train your models for you. So subscribe so you don't miss those future videos. Like or dislike this video. Let me know in the comments how I can improve. I've been getting such good feedback on the last few videos, uh, seeing a lot of new faces around. So it's really exciting and really pushing me forward to make more of these videos. Uh, share these with your friends if you think they'd enjoy them. And I just want to say thank you again for everything and I'll see you in the next video.